Hi guys, and thanks for stopping by. I'm guessing that you got here for my other tutorial, which we cover how to use Eclipse Window Builder to create a GUI or graphical user interface. Um, we use a calculator there, so we don't need to store memory. And I've gotten lots of questions and feedback and confusion about, well, how do I write a program that uses a GUI that actually remembers things? So I'm doing my best I can to put together a brief and to the point tutorial, but this is a little bit more complicated, so please bear with me. This tutorial will first talk about the concept. Basically at a very high level, what do we do? I will then show an implementation with Java um, where you can see that I'm not making things up, it actually does work. And lastly, we'll do discussion where I'll go a little bit more into depth, slightly more into depth, but not too deep about what's happening and why we took the steps we did. I organize it like this in case uh, you get the concept and you're like, oh, that's all I needed. I just needed to know how to do this very basic thing. And then you can stop watching the video and you're all the wiser for it. Um, but if you're still a little bit lost, hopefully we can clear up the confusion in the discussion section. I am making my code available on GitHub. I will put a link in the comments section below where you can download the Java and mess around with it yourself to see how it's working. So for my little toy example, let's say that I have a starship and I want to write a program that keeps track of the crew members or employees. I'm going to keep track of this information inside of a data file. Now a data file is a generic term that can be any number of things. In this example, it's a TXT or text file, which is a very basic open it with Word or Notepad and Windows type of file. The comma separated value or CSV file is also a very popular format um, or any number of files. The, these don't really matter what kind it is. It's just important to know how your data is being stored. So we're going to start off with the data file. In my case, I'm going to have employee information on each line. So in this example, I have an employee, Kirk, who's a yellow shirt. And the next line, I have Spock, who's a blue shirt, and so on. It could go as steep or as wide as I want it to. When I start the program, it's going to load from this data file, which is going to give the user the information that they need to modify or view or look up. And then when they close the program, I want to save to the exact same data file with the modified information. So in this hypothetical, I maybe add an employee, let's say Bones, who's a blue shirt. You can see that there. So hopefully it's obvious or apparent that the next time I start the program, it will load the modified data file that was output by the last time I ran the program. On a slightly more detailed level, I have a data file.txt that looks exactly like this. I have Kirk, comma yellow, enter, Spock, comma blue, enter Scotty comma red. I'm going to start my program and I have a file manager class that's going to allow me to read from this data file and create a list of employees. To put that in a little bit more technical jargon, I want to create an array list of crew member object instances. Now this is, um, object instances is kind of difficult to spit out, visibly say, but it is an important concept of object-oriented programming, and so hopefully you are familiar with that or you can look it up. So from the file manager, which reads in from the data file, I'm going to feed this list of employees to my GUI, which is also going to allow the user to interact, maybe add or delete or change information related to an employee. And then when the GUI, maybe a save button is clicked, it's going to pass this modified list of employees back to the file manager, which will then write out the modified list to the exact same data file. So in this example, again, I've added bones, which is in blue. So hopefully it's apparent that the next time I start the program, it will load from the modified data file. Because again, this data file is the exact same data file. Um, hopefully I could, you can see what's happening here and it's nothing too confusing. Um, before we jump over to the implementation, I'd like to point out a couple of things. 
As I mentioned, this relies heavily on object-oriented programming, uh, which is worthwhile knowing if you're going to be programming in Java. So do a quick Google search on that, refresh your memory. As for the code itself, I do implement a lot of static variables. And so um, I did it largely just because I wanted things to compile, so maybe they're not the most wise choice of using static variables. Uh, it's worthwhile knowing what static variables do. So again, it's not that hard to look into it. The day of the information age of Google, you can do a very quick search and hopefully it'll be clear. In the code, I also use a number of try-catch blocks. You typically have to do this with dealing with any kind of Java input-output file system. Um, basically, what it says at a very high level is we're going to try to execute the code, but in the off chance that something goes wrong or maybe our file isn't there, then we don't want a, the whole code to break. We're going to catch that case and exit safely. So um, with that, let's go ahead and jump over to our code. All right, so now we're in the Eclipse window. Um, you can see my program here. I have a few Java classes, which I'm about to discuss a little bit after the implementation, as well as my records.txt file, um, which come over here. We can see, look at that, exactly what I discussed before. So let's go ahead and run our GUI which again stands for a graphical user interface. All right, so this is very simple. Um, so let's first see if we can find an employee. If you remember, we had Kirk. Click Find. Here's all his information. We could do the same with Spock. Click Find. Um, and find the information again. Now I can see that his rank is a little uh, too long to fit, but that's just a simple fix with the GUI builder. So we'll ignore that for now. Let's say I want to find myself. I click find and I get a lot of NA or not applicable strings, which means I'm not in the text file. So let's go ahead and add me. Um, my name is Melissa. Let's say I'm a purple shirt and my rank is mm, lieutenant. I don't know how to spell lieutenant, so I'm just going LT. I'm going to click add. And when I clicked add, it passed this information over to the file manager, which then added it to the text file. Now when I click find, look at that. I come up, I'm no longer an A. So I'm going to close this now. We can go over to records. And we can see there I am on line four. So when I run GUI again and type my name, click find, there I am. So hopefully this very brief demonstration um, shows that this concept works at a high level. And I hope that you understood what happened. Now I only have add, so this is very basic functionality. But the same reasoning and code can lead you to add a delete or even modify button. So um, this is what this code does. Let's go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint to discuss what exactly these files are doing. So if you look on GitHub or in the Eclipse previous section, you notice that there are only five files in this entire program. What's more is that a number of these files aren't even really that important. They're just kind of there to help make sure things function smoothly. So to begin with, we have the driver class and the crew member class, which are both not terribly important. So the crew member is important because we define what an employee is there. This is how we know what our employee objects look like. But if you look at the code, it is very simply kind of a shell. It just says that an employee is going to have a name, a shirt, and a rank. And that's it. A little bit like a dictionary, I guess, for a crew member object. The driver is completely not necessary. If you look at it, you'll notice it has a main function, which means that we can run it 
and this makes it helpful to test our functions in other classes before we get to the main show of the GUI. This is a little bit like a poor man's unit test. So I encourage you when you download the program, go ahead and mess around in the driver. You're not going to mess up anything that will affect how the actual program runs. The two parts that do the bulk of the heavy lifting are the file manager, which we've discussed in previous sections. Um, so file manager.java is worth digging into because dealing with data files in Java is not always the most straightforward or easiest. Um, I have one example, but there are many different ways to skin a cat, if you'll excuse the expression. So um, it does do a lot of work and it's worth understanding what goes on in this file. And then of course we have the graphical user interface or GUI class which is the foundation of my Eclipse window GUI builder, and hopefully you understand what's happening here. If you look at the GUI code, I really encourage you just to look at the button functions because the find employee does the method of finding the employee, obviously, and that's a special line of code that lines of code that aren't necessarily GUI related, but they're short enough that we can include all that function all that functionality inside of the method, um, as well as the add button, which updates our file. So these two files are the bulk of the work in this program and tutorial. And then lastly, we have, of course, the data file, which we've already discussed um, a little bit to no end. So hopefully this is clear what's happening here. Um, and that's it. So before I leave you, let's go ahead and jump over to our, to my git file. Um, the, the link in this tutorial should lead you to GitHub, which looks like this, roughly. I might update it since this video has been committed, but um, you should still see everything happening here. You can click clone or download here, which will download the project so you can mess with it yourself. If you click on the source file, Oops, let's go ahead and go back. That was a poor example. Um, this is just shows the last changes I made, which is GitHub could be a whole other tutorial. But for now, we're just interested in looking at the code. So if we click on source, we can see these exact same files I just mentioned. Um, so let's go ahead and click on the file manager. And you can see right here, this is all my code. Um, it's really that easy. Now, GitHub and Git is a very important concept in programming. If you're not familiar, I encourage you to dive in. Um, and as I believe I also mentioned earlier, please, please feel free to fork this repository and change it to clean it up because I make no statements that this uh, code is perfect. So please consider forking it, cleaning it up, perfecting it, and then creating a pull request. If you run into any issues, please email me and I'm happy to help you with this assist. Uh, but aside from that, I think that's everything I wanted to say. So uh, thank you and I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, either comment here or contact me via my website. Thanks.